Dobre rano. Good morning, Dobre uh, Very happy to be here and to talk about uh, a project that has occupied uh, much of my life for the last 10 or 12 years or so. Uh, give you a brief introduction to the background of how I got into this and then talk a little bit about uh, how the site works and why and sort of what's behind the, the, uh, the sort of learning methodology. Um, I have always been interested in learning languages. Uh, at home I had, if I go back to the genesis of Link, I had lots of books in German, Swedish, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, and no matter how well I knew the language, there were always enough words in, say, Spanish that I didn't know that it was annoying to me. And in fact, you have this sort of situation where, depending on where you are, if, if, you know, as a learner in the sort of B1 to B2 range, which is like a long way, like, I think people underestimate the distance, in my view, between B1 and B2, and uh, so there you are, you're trying to read something, and there's just enough words that you don't know to make it annoying. Uh, you look a word up in the dictionary and you forget the word as soon as you close the dictionary. Uh, then you try and write lists of words and you never look at those lists again. Uh, it's all a very frustrating process. So that was going on. So the alternative is to get a reader with a glossary for every chapter, but the, what's frustrating there is that what the person who wrote the book thinks you don't know may in fact not be what you don't know. So you go to the list, the glossary for the chapter, the word you're looking for isn't there, but there's a bunch of words there that you already know that they think you probably don't know. So the, the glossary is very hit and miss in terms of helping you through the, the chapter. Uh, the other alternative is the sort of bilingual texts, and I have a lot of those at home, but those are also very annoying because Really, I want to stay in the target language. I don't want to go looking for this particular phrase in the, in the sort of whatever the, you know, English or other language. So none of those are very satisfactory. So that kind of led to the idea. Oh, and I should point out that I started learning Cantonese and uh, I discovered that there was a thing called a mini disc player. Uh, I had learned Chinese with these great open reel, you know, tape recorders. And then, of course, the cassettes, and the cassettes always going after a while, and you can't use them. So then the mini disc player was quite a revolutionary thing, and that quickly was obsolete, and the MP3 file, MP3 player came in. And then they had uh, online dictionaries. So a number of things came together to suggest that there was a better way of dealing with reading. And, and reading, to me, is, is the way I acquire vocabulary. Listening, though, as much as possible, I always like to have the audio with the text. And so audio and then text where I could learn from the two um, seemed to me a, a very powerful way to learn. And then I had, uh, because I was learning Cantonese, I learned about a Chinese immigrant to Vancouver who had all his money stolen at the airport. And this was on this Chinese radio that I was listening to. And so, and because at that time we were building software for sawmills, which we were selling in Scandinavia, Baltic states and stuff. I said, well, we'll hire this guy. If he's good, that's good for us. If he's not good, at least we give him a couple of months, get his feet, you know, on the ground here in Vancouver. Turned out that, and we checked, he had a high score in TOEFL, you know, test of English as a foreign language, but his ability to commute, c communicate was very poor. And so all of these things came together and we sort of developed a program somewhat for him and initially just for English and then that expanded into Link. So that's now, one other thing, I'll go through very quickly the slides that I presented in the other presentations, underlying, my underlying attitude towards language learning, and that is that it's, it's very much dependent on the attitude of the learner, how motivated, obviously this is commonplace, how motivated, how much the learner likes the language, how much the learner wants to integrate with the community of people who speak that language, how confident the learner is, so that's one thing. The next thing, of course, is time. Uh, it takes a lot of time. And the third thing, which I'll go into in a little more detail, is, is developing the ability to notice. Now, the ability to notice, you know, I was in a presentation just now given by a teacher of Slovak at the Center for Teaching of Slovak too. There's a great long title for that institution. And so she had a list of a, six or seven qualities of a good learner, and they were all very good. But one that was not on the list was the ability to notice. And I think that's so important because certain things, like having studied Czech, when I start studying Slovak, of course, immediately it's obvious that they don't say yak, they say ako. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. 
You know, they don't say sem, they say som. Uh, in English, for example, we all, learners know that the third person singular takes an S. He goes. Those things are surprisingly difficult to learn. And even yesterday, listening to Richard, of course, I like to listen, and, and he would say, sem, uh, som. Even though he knows that it's some. And ako is very difficult to get used to. The tendency is want it to want to say yak, yak, yak to minute or whatever. So, and I find myself, when I listen to Slovak, I deliberately notice certain things. If I hear ako, I'll ako, you know, there it was. I'll listen to it. Or if I see it, like, you know, I'd seen, for example, the, you know, those, is, is, it's not tato, or ta, it's tieto, actually. It's t-i-e-to. And... The fifteenth time I listen to it, I notice it. So no, and and so noticing, I think, is a very important skill. And and the other thing I think that's important is that we always forget whatever we learn, we're going to forget. And so you first have to notice it, and then you forget it again, and then you notice it again, and you forget it again. And so that's the learning process, rather than some teacher explaining in very clear terms how this works or that works. I mean, there's nothing difficult about the concept that the third person singular of the present, takes to, uh, present tense in English takes an S. It's a very simple concept. And yet, so many people say, he go. Because, again, it's a matter of noticing it, forgetting it, reusing it, noticing it. And, and actually, being corrected is not necessarily the solution. Uh, because I find if I'm talking to someone and they correct me, correct me while I'm speaking to them, that has very little impact on me. I don't remember the corrections. I only remember that I was interrupted in the conversation, but I don't remember what the correction was. So it's a part of noticing, but it's only one part of noticing. So again, I say you can only learn what you already know. So you accumulate all of this experience, and then you start noticing things that you've kind of seen before, but didn't really notice, and eventually they start to stick. That to me is the process. And that's why I don't like to spend a lot of time on deliberate learning activities, like focusing on, you know, like an Anki deck, because it pretty soon becomes a major burden. You have to spend X amount of time focused on trying to learn this information. Whereas I feel that if I expose myself to enough of the content through listening and reading, these things will appear often enough, and I'll start to notice them, and eventually they're going to stick. So that's kind of the underlying thought process behind Link. So I'm very much indebted to Stephen Krashen, who always, as those of you I'm sure who, who or, or, most of you are probably aware of Stephen Krashen, uh, it's comprehensible input, it's meaningful input. Now, obviously at an early stage in the language, it's difficult to get at very interesting material. But as soon as possible, I like to move to authentic, interesting content, where it's actually the subject matter that interests me. And if I, if I can acquire knowledge about this interesting subject matter, which might be history or it might be literature, then I will be exposing myself to so many occurrences of different things in the language, and I'll gradually be noticing them, and I will acquire the language, as well as a lot of knowledge about the history of, you know, Slovakia or whatever it might be. So, at link here, so what we do, this is the page, the main page. Uh, let's see. Here we are. No? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, we have what we call lessons, and we're on the lesson page. And what we see here are the four most recent lessons that I've studied. And they, this happens to... Whoops. Sorry. What did I do here? I'm not very good at this. Whoops. There we go. So here we are. Actually, I'm not studying Spanish, so this is not a good example. But whoever's page we chose here, there's a mixture of different lessons that they have been studying. In addition to which, there is a feed, because in the feed, you will have, if you have identified yourself as a beginner learner, you will be seeing examples of what other people at your level are studying. And you may choose to study those. Or you can follow your friends, and then you can choose to study the same lessons as your friends. But in addition to that, uh, we have, uh, I can't scroll down here because it's not the site, but if you are in an, at an intermediate or better level, then there will be, we have hooked up, I don't understand the uh, technology, but we have one, say, Mexican newspaper and one Spanish newspaper, and our site will go there and scrape articles and bring them into your feed, and you can then open them as lessons. Because the functionality that I will show you works not only for lessons that we have in our library, and there's a vast library, but it also works for any content that you bring in from the internet. So whether you you're, yourself go and 
import an, an e-book or search for newspaper articles or because we shove that into your feed, you can access a variety of content. Um, now, the exchange, it's, again, I, I think we have to do a better job with our, with, uh, you know, the, the meaning of some of these things. The exchange is actually where, do you, where you go to find a tutor. And it's also where you go to find friends who are studying the same language as you. That's not ideal. We're working on changing it, but that's what it is right now. So, you can, and, and we normally recommend to people, that once they have acquired enough vocabulary, enough exposure, familiarity with the language, they should then start to speak. Because ultimately, to speak well in the language, you have to speak a lot. Uh, we have a forum here, okay, where people talk about different subjects. Uh, you can import a lesson, so if you go to a, a site of interest to you, you can bring the material in. And all of the functionality, which I will describe, works. Unfortunately, this is not a realistic uh, profile, but we keep track of how many words you know, how many words you're trying to learn, uh, hours of reading, and things of that nature. Okay. So, the, okay. the major activity is to read these articles, lessons, to read them, and while reading them, you'll see that some words are in yellow, and some are in blue, and some are white. Okay? When you start, all the words are in blue. And the blue words are words that you don't know as far as the system is concerned because you haven't encountered them before on the system. It doesn't mean that you don't know them. You may in fact know them, but the system doesn't know that you know them. The yellow words are words that you have encountered before somewhere and you have looked them up on a, an online dictionary and you have saved them to your personal database. Those are yellow words. Those are words that you are in the process of acquiring, of learning. White words are words that you either didn't look up because you knew them, or words that you have learned. So they, have, they are no, no longer words that you are trying to learn. And the major activity is to convert your page from blue to yellow to white. And in the languages where I have been working at Link for a long time, like uh, now I'm starting now with Greek, it was very blue and it's now becoming more and more white with some yellow. And it's a very satisfying feeling to see these pages gradually becoming whiter. Yes? Let me ask a question. Does the system recommend you put forms up and out of order? Okay. Very interesting question. We can, right. No, we can deal with it now. We do, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it depends. You see, we are using dictionaries. Now, Depending on the dictionary you choose, and I'll show you that later, you choose your dictionary. In many cases, you know, you, whatever information, say the, uh, uh, you know, I use Cessnam for check, you know, whatever information the dictionary provides, that's what you get. This is just a platform that enables you to go to the dictionary of your choice and bring whatever information they have into your database. There are grammar-based dictionaries. There is Le Conjugueur, for example. So you can choose as one of your dictionaries, le conjugueur, and it will then go and say, this is what this is, or it won't do that, but it'll say, here is the verb that you looked up, conjugate it for you. Now you go and look and see which one it is. Um, yeah. yeah, but my question is rather, let's say, for instance, I learned the word mi million, or yeah. million. Uh, does the word millones appear then in the next uh, page, yellow or blue? Or? Okay. The system treats every form of the word as a different word. So, it's a bit of a disadvantage because you end up with an inflated uh, value for the number of words you know. Because you, you, you know million and you know millones. However, the plural is not always obvious. And personally I find in studying languages like, say, Slavic languages, where there's a significant difference. because. Every time that you, s you choose, like videojuegos, there are example phrases that are immediately, uh, you know, people your information box about that word. And it's useful to have five examples of druziami as opposed to druzie, for example, to go to Russian. Because in fact, th those are different, th the, the, the words function differently. 
So we do treat every form of the word as a different word. But it is a weakness, and we are going to, because we can't do everything at once, we're, we want to find resources. It's not something we're going to create. We have to find a resource, a grammar resource, so that the person sees a form of the verb, especially for verbs in Romance languages, that says, this is the third person singular of the whatever tense. But we don't do that right now. So, uh, yeah, what else we got here? Uh, I'll move on. So you can choose your dictionary, all right? So uh, Google Translate is there automatically, and for many languages, Google Translate is very good. One other thing, I should go back here. The first translation you see is going to typically be what we call a user hint, because every time one of our users goes to one of the dictionaries that they have selected, uh, and of course the dictionaries are, will vary depending on the native language of the user, then once that's brought in, any user who has the same native language will find, in other words, that solution is cached in the system. So that if you are a beginner, more than likely, most of the user hints, most of the definitions you find will come from user hints. Uh, if you are the pioneer in, you know, Romanian, you're going to be creating your own hints. You're going to be going to the dictionary every time. But if you are a beginner in Spanish, you aren't going to be going to the dictionary very often, unless you don't like the user hint, and then you can go to another dictionary. But you'll see here, um, Spanish verb conjugation is reversal. So if you're concerned about uh, conjugations, then you can put that up top, or Spanish grammar da uh, database. In other words, these are resources that you would be, you would, when you save the word, you would be taken to that site to see whatever additional information there is about the word you saved. And so you choose a dictionary. And so it's not, we, I, I shouldn't have put, don't worry about grammar, but my feeling is that grammar explanations actually are easy to find. Uh, if I went to study Slovak, I find a phenomenal PDF dictionary. Or I can go to slovak.eu and there's an interactive thing. I, curious about Slovak adjectives, nouns, whatever, I can find that information when I want it. Uh, but in order for me to make use of that information, I have to have some experience, exposure to the language. And so we begin with the premise that first, don't worry about the grammar. You know, here's this stuff, uh, words, they're all blue, you look them all up, you, you know, uh, you still don't make sense of it. For most of our beginner lessons, we have a translation, so that'll help you, and listen to it, and just accept the fact that over time, it'll become clearer. And that at some point, you'll become curious about things related to grammar. And then if the resources that we already have tied to it aren't good enough, then you can also Google Spanish verbs. And you'll find immense quantity of resources. So the other thing is we encourage people to save not only words, but phrases. And any time a member, a user, saves a phrase, that phrase is cached in the system. So, if you look up the word hola, no, if you look up the word uh, puedo, uh, pueda, uh, puedo, then you're going to find this phrase and any other phrase that any other user has saved with the word puedo. And if you like that phrase, that's one you would like to have, then you save it. So you don't have to necessarily accumulate other people's phrases as phrases that you want to learn, but it gives you an idea of phrases that other people have saved. Saving phrases is very useful, okay? Saving phrases is useful because when uh, I recommend, like I'm not a big Anki user. I don't like to sort of create for myself the obligation to, to review thousands of words and phrases every month. However, I find it very useful to review words and phrases immediately after having studied a lesson that that's the best time to go back there. It doesn't mean you're going to remember them, but it gives you a better chance of remembering them and, and perhaps noticing them the next time they come up. So what we encourage people to do is that uh, we say you should, and, and in fact, we're going to put this in. Right now, it's not obligatory, but it will become obligatory. You finish a, set, uh, a lesson, and you're going to go through our activities. And you can choose how many different activities you want to come at you, and they come at you randomly. So, a flashcard, reverse flashcard is from your language into the target language. Closed test, of course, is, uh, you know, uh, fill in the blank type of thing. Uh, 
which is also a very good because you've got a, a, a sentence, so you're rereading a sentence that was in the text. Uh, usually it's quite easy to choose the correct uh, word because it's pretty obvious that it's a verb we're looking for and there's four choices and there's only one verb or two verbs. But I find that having an easy task, which is forcing to, you to review things, is good. And tasks that are difficult are bad. That's in my experience as a learner. The more you can make it easy, an easy win, I think that's where Duolingo does well. Lots of easy tasks, people are happy. Uh, multiple choice is also very easy. And the dictation is much more difficult, where you get a text-to-speech version of whatever uh, uh, word. And in particular, where this is useful is if you save phrases. So you've saved a phrase, you get the text-to-speech, and you've got to type out the phrase. And so these come at you, 25 of them, after each lesson. You can go and do them again if you want. And this is also where, I'm not showing you this here, but this is where you can also move the status of your word along. So there's four levels, and if you feel more confident, then you can call it level two, level three, and eventually call it known as you're going through your uh, various activities. Uh, you can determine what shows up on the front of the flashcard, the back of the flashcard. There's a certain amount of, of uh, refinement that's possible there. And, but mostly we encourage people, get in the habit of listening and reading as much as possible wherever you are. The listening, of course, is easier to do than the reading, but my typical learning day, like if I get in an hour and a half a day of, of, of language learning, 45 minutes to an hour of that is just listening. And then I'll go and invest 30 minutes reading, predominantly on my iPad. The, by the way, we have a, a mobile app for this, and it's much more convenient much more pleasant to do it on the iPad than to have to sit in front of the computer and you know, use your uh, uh, you know, mouse and all of that stuff. So uh, I think it's so important to get in that you have to get in that hour, an hour and a half a day. And by having more mobile, portable ways of accessing all of this learning, it, it makes it easier to get in that, uh, that learning time. So listen and read. You listen, you don't quite understand it. You read it again you review your words again, you go back and listen again, and all of a sudden you start to notice more and more stuff. And, and there are certain things that you won't notice until the tenth time, you know, but, but that's where uh, you just have to stay with the process, in my opinion. That's what we encourage people to do. Uh, one of the, there's a number of, I won't go into all the different things that we can do, but one of, the things, one of the things that we encourage people to do is to add a tag. So, for example, in learning Slavic languages, uh, cases in general are a problem. Uh, verbs of motion are a problem, so I will tag verbs of motion, verbs of motion. So then I can accumulate 50, 100 examples of verbs of motion. I can review them all as a bunch using the activities. And I'll show you how that works. Or it might be the subjunctive. Okay, I have trouble with the subjunctive in French or Spanish. I will tag subjunctive, subjunctive, or verb or medical term. You choose what you want to tag these different words or phrases at as. It can be things like I have a, a tag that I use a lot is, is connectors. However, therefore, be, you know, why? Because these kinds of words in various languages are very useful to have. Um, where do we go? Yeah, so then you can, once you've tagged them, you can then, when you go to the vocabulary section, you have a number of options. Uh, obviously, you can, uh, you can just review those that are there. You, there are filters, including filtering by tags. Uh, you can change the status of them. Uh, you see the little, you know, three uh, uh, balls, four balls, that indicates the frequency level. So you could, in fact, in fact set up a list of, of uh, vocabulary items and only look at your four ball, like high frequency items. Uh, there's a number of things. Again, I don't have time to go into detail, but you can massage your vocabulary list to study things that are important to you. Uh, again, I think people are motivated by different things, but uh, it is motivating. I find the, the, the greatest motivation comes from seeing my blue words convert to yellow. But uh, I have, you know, a word count in, in check of 60,000 words, whatever that means. It doesn't matter. 60,000 is more than 40,000. So the more that known words total increases, I have a sense of achievement. In my case, it doesn't matter because I'm kind of motivated to learn anyway, but there are a lot of people, if they, you know, they'll ask us questions about the statistics, and to them it's quite important. 
Uh, I think keeping track of words of reading is particularly important. Again, in Czech, I, I looked the other day, I, I have read 1.5 million words in Czech. If you have read 1.5 million words, even though I, I may have trouble speaking now because I haven't spoken it for a long time, there's a lot of knowledge that's packed back into your brain. So if you can, in fact, generate, develop a high number for words read, that's going to be a good indicator that you have exposed yourself to enough of the language that, in fact, you have the potential to become a fluent speaker. Uh, we have tutors, and so you can uh, choose to sign up for a conversation, uh, or you go to italki, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think eventually, uh, and, and I think the decision on when to start speaking uh, is, is very much a personal one. It depends on the language. Uh, in my own case, uh, for Slovak, I think I could start speaking after a day I, <laughs> I started speaking with Lydia, but with Greek, uh, two months. Uh, when I started with Russian, a good year. So it depends on how similar the languages are uh, as to when and your own personal, uh, even circumstances. Obviously, if, if I'm in Slovakia, I'm going to speak because I'm going to go to the store. Uh, if I'm at home in Vancouver, I have no particular opportunity or motivation to go and speak Slovak so that it'll take longer before I start speaking. Uh, when, we, when you speak with one of our tutors, you get a conversation report and uh, in that report, uh, here I have, in fact, saved a number of words here that are in yellow. I have no more blue words on this because I've already gone through it. But it's, it, I find that it's much more effective uh, to get a report of the discussion uh, where the tutor actually saves phrases where you had difficulty. And I review it immediately after my uh, conversation when the conversation is still very much fresh in my mind. And I remember myself trying to say these things. I remember that I said it wrong, and I review it. And of course, as with any correction, the fact that I review it and try and learn it doesn't mean that I'm going to remember it. Chances are I'll make the same mistake next week when I speak to my tutor. But that's just how things are in language learning. Um, and yeah, you can chase other people, search by country, by language, and stuff. Uh, there is a forum, so if you look up a word and you've got the meaning in the dictionary, you can't make sense of it, you can ask on the Spanish language forum, and hopefully one of our tutors or another member, a Spanish speaker, will help you out. And uh, the other thing is, uh, I think, so I've got a couple of minutes here, it's very important, I think, to vary the type of content. We encourage our learners to mix easy with difficult. Uh, and uh, in that sense, I mentioned the other day that we've started this uh, mini stories uh, uh, project where we're having this series of stories converted into um, however many, 40 languages, 30, 40 languages. And the mini stories, this one happens to be in Slovak, but the story is very much, it's like a repetition. Uh, you know, John is a cook, and then John says, I'm a cook. And, and so you have a very simple story, typically out of everyday life, and then it's followed by uh, questions. John is a cook. Is John a cook? Yes, he's a cook. Is he a, you know, a teacher? No, he's not a teacher. So, very simple questions where the answers are given to you and it's more about exposure than forcing you to rack your brain. And I am a great believer in anything that is easy is good. When were, I always hated questions like uh, having, you know, if I read a story then, why did the baker not do this? And then I have to go back and look and I don't want to do that. I like it. Here's the answer. John is a cook. Is John a cook? Yes, he's a cook. So those are those, and that's it. So that's just a very brief uh, review of Link. Uh, I didn't want to get the computer out and do stuff because my experience is that it doesn't work very well. But I'm very happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, uh, what is the, the largest file size that you can actually upload? What, what, what do you normally take on that? Uh, and so far as, now, unfortunately, my knowledge of things technical and details is not as good as that of my son, Mark, who is the one who is running it. My experience has been that, uh, like, I, rec I, I recently uh, bought a Slovak ebook, for which I also bought the audiobook. And I tried, and I put the whole thing into, uh, into Caliber. And I don't know how many pages there were in the ebook, but the audiobook was 15 hours long. And I tried to import it, and it wouldn't take it. The audio. No, no, the audio I don't bother with. I'm not going to try to match. <laughs> you know, it's just the ebook. So then I had to go in to Caliber, and I had to go, you know, take a quarter of the book and import it. A quarter of the book and import it. But 
it, 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 that, that's a technical question. I can get you an answer as to how, but, but once I had broken the book down into four sections, I was able to bring the whole thing into, uh, into Link, and I'd be able to, uh, then able to read the book in Link. But I don't try and match the audio to each lesson because it's just too much work. I got the audio on my, uh, on my iPhone, and I do the, the work in Link. But I just don't know the answer. But we do each, we break the book up. So each lesson is going to be, I think, 2,000 words long. Because if you have a lesson that's like, however many, you know, 500,000 words long, it's just too difficult to work, and it's too much work for our system. So we want to have a shorter lesson, so that all of, because there's a lot of calculation that's in behind that, telling you which words you know, how many you know, and all of that. And if, if in each lesson, they, it, the computer has to, for all of our members, has to do all that work, much work, it just slows everything down. So that each lesson is going to be 2,000 words long. But the, when you import the book, it'll automatically break it into chapters for, for you. Um, I'm teaching through italki and I was wondering how and if it's possible to use Link to help your students learn. So would it be possible to use Link during my, uh, my tutoring lesson? Okay, it, it depends on what you do. My interaction with italki tutors is that I want to speak. Mm -hmm. And I ask them to send me a Google document, or some form of document after the hour with as, as many of the mistakes as they can remember or that they made a note of during the discussion. I then import it into Link. So I integrate the tutor's report into Link. I think the big advantage of being live with the tutor is that we have a chance to speak. So mm -hmm. if, if you said, okay, uh, you know, I'm studying Dutch with you, and you say, okay, Steve, bring me a list of your words in Dutch, and we're going to go over those words. I personally wouldn't want to do that. I would rather talk to you. But it's something you could do. You could say, listen, Steve, I want you to study this lesson in Dutch. I want you to save any words that you have trouble with. I want you to, you know, show me the list, and we'll go over those words in the classroom, for example. That would be one, one way. Yeah, what I, I mostly meant was that report card. Yeah. To, to use it like directly. Well, uh, you know, again, typically uh, I talk, you're talking on Skype. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I don't think we would, uh, we haven't thought of doing that. T typically, the way Link works is I interact with a text, I save words and phrases, a new text comes in, it already tells me which words there I know, which words there I'm trying to learn, and which words are new to me. So I need to bring that into Link when I'm working with Link. I don't think that's something we could do while... We could open a lesson that I have studied, have two screens, or at least, you know, whatever it's called, watch my screen or something. It's possible, but I just haven't, haven't really given... That would be up to the tutor to come up with. Okay, I'll, uh, just, yeah, I think we gotta make I'll see what I can do uh, in, in terms of learning. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Sorry, we, just to give everyone a chance here, get back. So, um, the dictionary is very important. I saw on your page they were in English. Is it possible also to get the dictionary in your of native course, language? Of course. We have, uh, uh, we, uh, every learner identifies their, their, their interface language and their dictionary language. Now, some people may in fact have a different dictionary language to interface language, especially uh -huh. if we don't have their interface language, right? We only have about 15 interface languages. Uh -huh. so. But obviously, a German speaker or a Japanese speaker is going to want a dictionary into their language. They can also choose not to. They can choose to have, go to French instead of Japanese if they want. So you, you identify, and, and in fact, we are always open to people who say, can you put on this dictionary for my language? I'm whatever, Lithuanian or something. If, if we are able to link up to that dictionary, we just add the dictionary. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so my question is about Chinese. Um, how yeah. do you do it with uh, reading Chinese characters? Do you also have a um, Latin transcript to that? Or? Yeah. We have pinyin. Uh, we have pinyin. Again, I, I'm not as close to it because I'm not doing Chinese at Link. Mm -hmm. But when I've looked at it, you can turn the pinyin on or not have it on. Same with Japanese. You can have furigana, which is, you know, the hiragada furigana, or you can have romaji show up. So these are, these are different scripts that can be integrated into the 
lesson. But you save the actual kanji. When you go to look up the word, it's the kanji word that you look up, which is in fact the same as the pinyin, but you see the pinyin. Okay. However, you would still have to go somewhere else, I think, to learn to write the characters. Like there, and there are apps for that. Because ours is all about listening and reading. And so to be able to read, you've got to know the writing system. Yes? Yeah, so I do um, use Link. I started a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't know about this tutoring part, which in my opinion is a very, very useful feature. Um, my first question is, um, can I see that also in the app? Because I just checked it and I couldn't see it. Again, um, I think the tutoring, at this point, I think the intention is to make that possible through the mobile app, but at the present time, for okay. tutoring, it's, it's a, you know, we're not sure, a huge organization, there's so much stuff that, sure, that they yeah, want to yeah. add, I and this. I know, one, first of all, our, I, our uh, iOS app is, is better than the Android app, uh, the fellow doing the Android is a little bit um, behind, there are features that, that we have in the iOS app that aren't yet in the Android app, but it's all coming, and I know they do have the intention of also, in fact, our whole uh, tutor interaction is not as good as it should be. There's a number of okay. issues. It's not the strongest part of our program. And, and with that, it creates problems because then tutors put up times, nobody shows up, then they poll, poll they're no longer available. And there, that's a whole issue. And part of it is our interface. So yeah, the whole tutor thing is one thing that we want to improve. But we have no trouble saying, in the meantime, go to italki. Yeah, and think. through which platform or like how, how do you do the tutor thing? Is it that on Skype or is there a specific platform uh, or? Uh, at the present now we're using Skype. Okay. You know, I, I personally uh, experimented with Google, Google Plus or Google Hangouts. I, I, ha I found it difficult at times. You'd send someone a link, they didn't show up and stuff. So with all of its imperfections, we've stayed with Skype. But we're open. I mean, we're not wedded to Skype. Whatever okay. works. Well, thank you. Some more questions, please? Yep. May I ask you, are the mini stories already available on the website? Okay, the mini stories, uh, there are some that are available. I can't tell you exactly how many are available. Um, I wanted Greek, so I paid someone to translate and record. So we got up to 49 lessons in Greek. Uh, Slovak, uh, I think we've loaded a few. I, I got them and I personally imported them. I don't think they're available yet. I think Spanish, maybe up to 20, German, uh, but there are a lot of them in the pipeline and they're being coordinated by, we have a, a sort of a personal assistant who lives in Serbia and he, you know, he's dealing with volunteers. So some volunteer did less than 30 to 35. He still, and he's got one to five, but he doesn't have the lessons in between. So he's waiting till he has a, enough of them in these different languages to put them up. For those languages that are not at link, eventually it'll all be made public. Like there will be a URL where you can go and pick any language you want. Basically, my motivation in starting this is if we can get 50 lessons in any language, we will make it a beta language at link. Because I always fight with my son, Mark. He has to run the site. And I'm saying, why don't we add this language? And he says, no, because there's no learn. We, won't, we can't justify it. And so I said, okay, if I can get 50 lessons in a language, we'll make it a beta language, and if I get to 100, it'll become a supported language. So he agreed. So hopefully we will get more of those languages onto Link, but even if that doesn't happen, whatever we get will be made available for people that they, they can go and download the audio and the text. Hi, uh, I actually had two things. First was... Uh... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. you looked a little confused. Um, first was in response to the thing about uh, lessons. Personally, I use it for my homework when I'm reading before a lesson, uh, and that way I can look things up while I'm reading anything. Like if, if, if I'm reading before an italki lesson, then I will import it and be able to read through it a bit more quickly and save any words or um, grammatical pieces that I haven't understood. Sorry, this is as a learner or as a teacher? This is as a learner. Okay. Um, I'll do this and uh, I, I, I have to sneeze. <laughs> uh, my my two-fold question, one was um, about learning Korean, uh, where I would say that uh, as the only non-Latin script language I've learned with, with Link, that I find it much less useful, I will say, in the not recognizing verb forms thing that someone came up with and, and not recognizing 
um, for example, when it, also in Turkish, um, which I, I speak to a reasonable level, um, adding suffixes. I mean, I've learned the same. I've had to mark the same root as known so many times when what I actually don't know could actually be just one piece of the word and that I've really struggled with. The other thing is um, adding audio to self-imported lessons. Um, and I'm pretty sure there isn't any kind of um, robotic text-to-speech feature available. And although it's not that I can find, for some, okay. maybe not for all languages, but basically something like that would, that would really help because I know you can import native audio, but um, I think that it's not as well integrated okay. for um, okay. text to speech. With regard to Korean, Korean, and I did Korean at Link, it's not the best. <laughs> A number of reasons. First of all, Korean dictionaries aren't very helpful, to say the least. And neighbor, we have neighbor and we have that other one, I can't remember what it's called. And I guess it's basically for Koreans who are learning English or something, but sometimes you get an explanation, sometimes you get a few sample sentences. Like very often you're still left wondering, scratching your head. So that's a problem. With regard to sort of the grammar in Korean, we did an exercise with the University of British Columbia around Korean and, and we are looking at in all languages, how we can tie grammar resources to words that people look up. So more grammar information. We consider that to be a weakness, and we, but we can only do so many things. And once you start dealing with grammar resources, you're now dealing with language-specific issues. And that includes, therefore, your Turkish thing. Yeah. It, it, it comes up, though, for example, in Japanese and Chinese. With it. We have a splitting uh, algorithm, which is 90% good. But for 10% of the time, it splits stuff off that really should be part of that word. So there are uh, language-specific issues that we eventually want to get to, but we, ha we haven't so far. With regard to the, uh, any, any uh, lesson that you import, if you have audio for that lesson, like uh, some uh, sound file, you can import it. With regard to text-to-speech, we're dependent on, we have, I think it's not Google Translate, I don't know what we use, but whatever they do, if they have text-to-speech, like, there's no text-to-speech for Ukrainian, when I was doing Ukrainian, but there is for, say, Romanian. I don't know why that is, but that's just the way it is. And if you highlight a phrase, if you highlight a word, you get the text-to-speech when you're reading through it. So if you were to go through highlighting every phrase, which sometimes I might do, you can actually hear everything in text-to-speech. I personally find that text-to-speech is easier to tolerate when it's in short bits, like words and phrases. If you were to actually try to, try to listen to a whole lesson in text-to-speech, I think it might get grating after a while. Yeah, that, it should, I don't know, I, I don't do Turkish, so I don't know if that's available for Turkish or not. Okay, any more questions? Eva, yep. I should have asked it after, after asking about uh, Chinese characters and stuff. I'm asking about languages that have vocals, that like Hebrew, especially, and Arabic. Is there an option to import vocals, or you suggest to use text-to-speech? Um, perhaps in six months, if you ask me that question, I'll have had some experience with Arabic on Link. I, I just don't know the answer. I know there are issues. I know that th neither one of them are supported languages. Uh, we have content, some people use them. I don't know how well it works. I know nothing about it. But when we get, if, we, if those languages become supported languages, then we're going to have to put more resources to solving specific issues that affect Hebrew or Arabic. Okay, some more questions here. We still have two minutes for questions. Thanks, Steve, for presenting on Link. I've been using Link for about a year and a half now. And there's a lot more to it than I've been using. And so sometimes I look at a YouTube video and see if I can fill in the gaps. Do you feel that your first question would be, do you feel that there are some, some things that are, haven't been put up on YouTube for instructions yet? And if that's the case, are you looking for collaboration? for people who might, uh, who are real fans of it and want to get the most out of it, who would be able to have contact with the office, kind of get guided through, help produce material on YouTube to, to actually help everybody else find these little more obscure parts of how to get the most out of Link? We would love to. 
We would love to. The problem is we have very limited resources and we have, I think Mark, I'm, like, I'm not involved, but Mark, my son and his gang have, have done a good job of, of improving Link. Although when you change, there's always a few people who don't like it, but I think generally speaking, it's, it's a, a change in the right direction. Obviously, every time you change something, if you have 10 videos in 10 languages explaining how to use it, now those videos are all obsolete and so you have to do it again. So we've been waiting until the thing sort of settles down a bit, but we would love to have people help us explain Link. And the difficulty is most people don't have a lot of patience for explanations. So we've also been working in the direction of making it more and more obvious. So one of the things that Mark wants to do is he wants to introduce like a sentence view for people who start, that he only get a sentence and then you get the translation into your own language under the sentence in addition to being able to look up the words because then people are less frustrated than when they get confronted with the text and they don't understand it. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff and people don't understand the concept that actually a lot of listening and reading is going to build up your language potential so that you, you needn't worry about what you can say on day one. Uh, you should be worrying about what you can say on day 30 or day, day 60. And so, but you can't explain that to people. You can't explain to them why they should use Link, how you should use Link. The people aren't interested. So we have to try to make it as automatic, as brain dead as possible. But by the same token, if we had people who are more skilled than we are making videos that are on YouTube, obviously we'd love that. That helps to promote the site, helps to explain it. We'd love it. We're interested in any form of, of collaboration. Absolutely. Thank you. So our time has run up, run out. Uh, before we give a big applause to Steve, just a small remark from the organizers where they were selling smoothies the other days. There is a big notice board and you are kindly asked to leave your feedback, comments on that board. So thank you, Steve.